Joanne, and welcome back to Flourish. We are so grateful to be with you today in your home, and we want to invite you in to join our conversation. You know, in God's master design, He intended girls and women to be loved and protected and cherished, first by their parents, then by their husbands, and even by the other male relatives in their lives. But unfortunately, as we've been talking about, the devil is all about death and destruction, and he wants to destroy anything that God deems as beautiful. And so in his master plan, the devil, he has seeked to try to destroy women from the beginning of time. He has been waging war against women ever since Eve turned against him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so because God prophesied that the Messiah, Jesus, would be born through woman, Satan has been trying to destroy women ever since. And those arrows, as ferocious as they are, continue even to today. So I have two of my very close friends with me today, Angel and Kathleen. And that's what we wanna talk about because Satan has attacked women in an attempt to destroy them. His treachery, his true stories are in the pages of the Bible. And again, they continue through today. But, and I want you to hear this. I may say this twice, it's so important. In Jesus, the devil never wins. Yes. Let me say that again, because it is true and it is powerful. In Jesus, the devil never wins because Jesus makes broken girls whole. Yes. Jesus makes broken girls whole. So I've got a question for you, friends. Has something happened to you in your life? Some pain that you carry as a broken girl? Is there a part of you that you keep buried in the past because it's so broken who you are? You are not alone. And that's what I, I'm going to ask that question to you, my two friends today, Angel and Kathleen. Let me ask you that same question. Do you have something in your life or maybe in someone you love their life? a broken part of you, a broken girl mm -hmm. that you still keep buried that affects you today. Yeah. What would you say? I do. Um, and it's a story that's not fun to tell or hear except Jesus. Mm -hmm. But when I was four years old, um, mm -hmm. I was broken like a lot of girls and women are. My uncle who lured me into a dark spot at my grandma's yellow house and sexually abused me. You know, I'd been such a happy, carefree little girl. That changed everything. Um, I became silent and hidden and shame, such shame, you know, just filled yeah. my heart. Mm. I remember we at school right after that, the teacher gave us a big piece of paper and said, you know, draw everybody, draw a picture of themselves. And there's all these, you know, little four-year-olds drawing pictures. I drew this little tiny black, Mm. you know, dot basically on the page and the rest was mm. blank. And the teacher and my parents asked me, you know, why, where's the rest of your picture? Why are you just this tiny little mm. thing? And I couldn't tell them. Mm. I couldn't tell them. So that secret got buried down so deeply that I forgot. It's like I knew something had happened to me sometime, but I could not remember. But my body told the story, mm. you know, for decades afterwards, I would wake up at night sometimes and I would just feel like I was being strangled. I couldn't breathe, I was choking. So I'd sit up and run out of the bed and really just run around our apartment or house mm. trying, to, trying to breathe. And it terrified my husband, you know, mm. poor Patrick. And it terrified me, mm. um, especially one morning when I actually, I was pregnant, like big pregnant. And that happened and I was so panicked because I was choking that mm -hmm. I ran out of the apartment and down the street and wow. my neck him. Mm. Wow. But I never knew why. You know, mm. why did that yeah, why yeah. did that always cycle go on? Until that one day when the Lord in mm -hmm. his gentleness and kindness, it was a devastating day, but he revealed the whole mm. thing to me and I remembered all of it. All came back. It did. And when that came back. He put me on a road with him, mm. Jesus and me, on a road to healing, Praise God. freedom, redemption, like I had never experienced in my mm. whole life. 
Your perfect example, Kathleen, of God taking a broken girl yes. and making her whole. Yes. And friends, that's what God wants to do for all of us. If you feel like you're listening to Kathleen's story and you can even relate to part of that, if you feel like you are a broken girl, Jesus wants to make you whole and he has the power to do that. Not only does he have the power to do that, he has the love to do that. And he wants to do that for you. So keep listening and we'll find out more. How about you, Angel? Yeah. Oh, Kathleen, your story still brings me to tears. Yeah. It's a beautiful redemption story. Mm -hmm. Well, by the grace of God, I was not sexually abused, but my dad did not know how to cherish mm -hmm. me. I was the only girl. I had two brothers and he spent most of his time with the boys. And um, so I never really got that attention from my dad. I, I remember one time he took me on a date. We went to a baseball game. I didn't care about baseball, but what I cared about was being with my dad. It was such a special time. Felt like a little princess for a moment. Yes. And then um, kind of went back and really he would say things to me that would mm -hmm. shut me down, uh, make you know, not giving me permission to have a voice. Why are you crying so much? Why are you so emotional? Things like that. So um, I learned to just hide mm -hmm. feelings and shame mm -hmm. came mm -hmm. right. for different reasons. And then, of course, then I married somebody who kind of um, good men, but just didn't know how to cherish women. Mm -hmm. But God, <laughs> in his redemption story, almost uh, our marriage almost didn't make it because of those things. Mm -hmm. But God would not let me leave the marriage when I wanted to. And I was really not happy about it because <laughs> I thought I'd be better off, you know, with somebody else, finding somebody that could cherish me, could love me. But God knew the heart of my husband what I needed. And he sent me on a healing path mm. that I didn't know. I'm a counselor. I didn't know at that point what God could do in my heart and in my soul. So he began to redeem me and um, show me his love mm, beautiful. and then redeemed our marriage because ah. of that. What a, what a merciful God we oh, have. He's Not amazing. only healing angel of her pain, making this broken girl whole, mm -hmm. but then also restoring her marriage. Yeah. God is a God that cares about all the details of our life. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a lot of broken girls mentioned, which by the way, I'm a broken girl too. We all are because mm -hmm. we live in a yes. broken world, right? Yeah. And I have my own story of pain as well and experienced abuse as a young girl. But I don't want to go into that now. I want to jump into the mm -hmm. Bible because yeah. this is where we find answers to all the questions that we have. And there's a lot of broken girls mentioned in scripture. And so if you have a Bible, I would love for you um, later today or another time, read 2 Samuel chapter 13. And that's where you're going to find the story that we're going to focus on. But I'm just going to share that story. And if you girls want to jump in and add to it as we go along, please do. But we want to tell you the story about Tamar. Mm -hmm. Tamar is a princess. Gosh, at least in America. I don't know how it is in, in your country. Our little girls love princesses. Mm -hmm. We have Ariel. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> we have Elsa awesome. the, from Frozen. We have all the Disney princesses. And I have several granddaughters. And oh my goodness, they all love princesses. Yes, they, do. they like to put on a little crown. They like to put on the pretty yeah. dresses and pretend that they're a princess twirling mm -hmm. in them. Your granddaughters? It all comes naturally <laughs> to yes. us. It's, it's amazing. Yes. Yeah. Well, Tamar is a real princess. Mm -hmm. Her dad is a king. His name is King David. He's written much of our Bible, a lot of our Psalms. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even though he was a wonderful king, King David is known as having a heart for God. He was not perfect. Mm -hmm. So we have King David. He has his daughter, Tamar. Mm -hmm. In fact, she is the only one of all of his daughters that is named in the Bible. But he also has mm -hmm. a son, Amnon. Amnon is the crown prince and he's spoiled. That often happens with these mm -hmm. boys, doesn't it? The yes. oldest son, I don't know, maybe you see that in your culture as well. Right. Those boys can be spoiled. Well, Amnon, it says, he had the, said he was in love with his half-sister. So not his full sister, his half-sister, mm -hmm. Tamar. So much in love with Tamar that he becomes obsessed with her. That love turns into obsession that actually makes him ill that he's in bed, he can't get out of bed because all he can think about, and it says in the Bible, he cannot think about anything because he, he wants to know how he can take her. Mm -hmm. Even yes. his longing is evil. He wants to abuse 
his half sister. Mm -hmm. So in comes a friend of his who's also his cousin. And do you know what they do? They actually plot mm -hmm. a way for Amnon to take his sister Tamar. And he says, what you can do, pretend that you're sick. Tell the king, your dad, that you're sick and have him bring, have Tamar come in mm -hmm. and cook you a meal with her own hands in front of her. And then you can have her. And so that's what he does. He pulls King David mm -hmm. into the story. And he asked David, Dave, you know, Father, I'm so sick. The only thing that will make me better is if my sister Tamar comes and makes a meal before me and feeds me. Mm -hmm. Poor Tamar comes from the part of the palace where all the women are. Mm -hmm. The way scripture de describes it, it sounds like she comes alone. She's unescorted. Mm -hmm. The servants let her in mm -hmm. to Amnon's room. She makes with her hands. He watches her prepare this meal. And it's not enough. He sends all the servants out. So now she's alone, mm. dressed in her royal, royal robes, preparing this. What's going through her mind as she's making this oh, food? Yes. And then he says, come into my bedroom. Feed me with your hands. Who knows what Tamar's thinking? Mm. She does. She's a trustworthy young woman. By the way, scripture tells us that she's pure, mm -hmm. she's beautiful, and that she's a virgin. Yeah. And so she comes in to the bedroom, yes. all the servants are sent out. And what does he do? He grabs her, yes. mm -hmm. he grabs her. Yeah. And she tries to reason with them. Don't do this to mm -hmm. me. She tries everything she can. Don't hurt me. Don't shame me. She even uses that word shame. Right. Don't shame me. She tries to reason with him the best way she can. You could marry me, ask the king. Perhaps he will give you to me, give me to you in marriage. Mm -hmm. she, she tries all the different avenues that she can think of. Right, even saying what it might do to him. Make That's him right. look bad, right. right. You'll be shamed, you'll yeah. look like a fool. Right, yes. yeah. But it doesn't work, mm -hmm. and he rapes her. Mm. That poor, precious, virgin young woman, beautiful princess is raped. And then immediately it says, as soon as his lust is satisfied, he hates her. And he wants to push her out. In fact, he even does, get away from me, woman. He tells, calls the servants back, get this woman. Can't even use her name. Right. He pushes this violated woman out of his chambers. Mm -hmm. And he tells the servants, lock the door behind her. Can mm. you imagine? It's heartbreaking. Uh, it is heartbreaking. Yes. Uh, that This story just literally breaks my heart. Mm -hmm. And so she goes out and, you know, the, 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 um, oven that she cooked the food in has coals in it and she mm -hmm. took those coals from the food she just prepared for this half brother in trust and she puts it on her head she mm -hmm. puts those ashes on her head she tears her robes she knows that she is a violated woman mm -hmm. and she runs out mm -hmm. and she sees her real full brother Absalom I know all these names may be confusing she sees her full brother who recognizes something bad yeah. has happened to mm -hmm. Tamar and he says has Amnon done something to you and he tries to protect her the best way he can but he silences her mm -hmm. he says don't 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 talk about this right, yeah. he lets her go live in his home and um, for two years that's where she lives a desolate violated woman in silence mm -hmm. and um, two years later though Amnon or excuse me, Absalom, the full brother, comes back and he plots to kill this half-brother. That's how he justified his behavior. So what do you guys think of that story? What oh. pops out to you when you hear that? What Man. are some of your thoughts? Well, you know, just it's heart, it is heartbreaking. I get mad at King David because mm -hmm. he didn't that's protect nothing. Thank you for bringing that his part daughter. Yes. I mean, that, again, you know, we're, that's like you said, we're, the, the father is supposed to love, protect, yes. cherish, yes. and he didn't do his job. And then it led to all this destruction. And yeah. that makes me sad. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And mad. And yeah. fathers, if yes. there's any fathers listening, mm -hmm. God has called you to protect your daughters. Mm -hmm. King David had a lot of authority as a king, and he was angry, mm -hmm. but he did nothing. Mm -hmm. He right. will stand before God mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. Kathleen, yes. any thoughts that pop up to you with this story? Oh, gosh, you, you, what Angel said already. And then also, it, this is a pattern. I mean, abusers yes. have proximity and access. Um, and a lot of times because they're in families. Yeah. I know for for us, you know, we got together every Sunday at my grandma's house. That was what we did. Um, so there was a lot of opportunity. Mm. And like mm -hmm. Tamar being sent to her abuser by her dad, King David, who did not know the plot. And yet 
um, you know, you'd think, isn't there something fishy about this? Yes, yes. Um, a lot of times the family system protects abusers. Yes. Mm -hmm. I got to tell you, my grandma was my, one of my best friends until she passed away at an, mm -hmm. at an old age. Um, when we were going through her things afterwards, we found all of these photos of our family. And my uncle's face was cut out of them. Really? And my thought was, did she know? Mm. did she know yeah but you know we're, yeah. we don't say anything mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. that secret keeping yes. is death it, it, is. it is you may not literally die but figuratively right. you die and yeah. it, and and it's what satan counts on right is mm -hmm. to keep the secret right darkness because as yeah. soon as you bring it into the light things start changing right. Right. so when so if somebody out there has been mm -hmm. abused if you can find one safe person yes to talk yes, to, to yes. talk about it. The other thing that I want to say is about the lust part. Mm, yes, that You know, I read something yeah. recently that said lust is about getting. Mm. Love is about giving. Oh, that's say that again. That's beautiful. Yeah, lust is about getting and love is about giving. And so lust is very self-centered and, and it is based on hate. Right. And so that's why the hate shows up mm -hmm. as, as, a, as they conquer and get what they want. And um, yeah, it's just, yeah. it's a destructive cycle. Yeah. It's awful. Mm -hmm. And Angel is a counselor. So hearing mm -hmm. um, wise words from her comes from a lot of years of experience of working with women yeah. that have been abused. And of course, we know abuse takes many different forms. Mm -hmm. It can be physical, mm -hmm. you know, being hit being beaten. It can be sexual, being raped or molested, even by a family member, someone trusted, perhaps a friend. It can be verbal with words. And of course, it can mm -hmm. be emotional with control. Yeah. So abuse mm -hmm. takes many forms. Mm -hmm. So friends, if you have struggled with any kind of abuse. Mm -hmm. And one of the things um, I want you to know that Jesus wants to set you free. Yes. And he yes. is able to do that. Uh, I do have a question for mm -hmm. you, Angel. One of the things I've seen a pattern of, and we see that in this story, is that so often the person that is violated, that like Tamar was violated and cast out, mm -hmm. she was silenced by her brother who probably right. wanted to help her, right. but didn't know how to. Right. Mm -hmm. And somehow keeping her silent, he maybe thought that would protect her right. because the mainstream society would still accept her if they didn't know what happened. Mm -hmm. um, but what happens is immediately... Tamar saw herself, of course, as violated. Right. And she took on the shame and the ugliness mm -hmm. that really should have been put on Ab Amnon, who right. is the one that did the yes. violation. Yeah. Yes. It's like they switch roles. Yeah. Yes. Um, could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. From your, put your counseling hat on. Right. <laughs> Blame the victim. Blame the victim. And uh, again, lust is, uh, is mm -hmm. irresponsible and doesn't take responsibility. So, and then abandons. And so it's blame the victim. Then the victim is left with all the destruction and all this stuff. But God, yes. <laughs> but God. And one of our favorite verses in this ministry and favorite chapters of the Bible is mm -hmm. Isaiah 61. And he talks about binding up the brokenhearted, setting mm -hmm. the captives yes. free yes. Um, and release for the prisoners. So in Jesus, that's his first sermon yes. when, he, when he starts his ministry. And this is why Jesus came, was to heal us mm -hmm. from that shame. Yes. And, and to repair and redeem and restore sin. Yes. So that means our own sin, but it also means the sin that was done to us. Correct. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it just is, yeah. So he can do this for you. He mm -hmm. can make you pure again, yeah. make you holy. You know how you said Tamar just put those ashes mm -hmm. on, ripped her robe. He puts that robe back on you. Mm, he makes you clean yes. as white as snow, the yes. um, scriptures say. Yeah. And he can truly, truly do that. Yes. There are lies that we start believing about ourselves when we've been abused. He will replace those lies with truth. Mm -hmm. You are chosen, you're beloved. You know, it just goes on and on, mm -hmm. but he can do that for yes. you.
Yeah. And not only can you, he wants to. Yes. In fact, I was just yes. reading this morning in Luke and there was a man totally different. It's not a story of, you know, abuse in any way, but there was a man that had leprosy. And, you know, in, in Bible times, leprosy was a very unclean disease. You had to keep your distance from these people. And this man came up to Jesus and he didn't ask Jesus to heal him. He, he asked him if he could make him clean. But the beautiful mm. thing, I can't remember where I was going with this story, except for he <laughs> reached out and touched him. He wants to. He, right. he exactly wants what it to was. heal. There we go. Yes. He, he said to Jesus, if you're willing, yes. you can make me clean. Yes. And then Jesus said, I am willing. Not only is Jesus able to, yes. he is willing to. Yes. Yeah. Gosh, Joanne, that just makes me think not only is he able to and willing to, but the woman who, with the issue of blood, who had bled so long, all she did was reach out mm. and touch his robe, and he felt yes. power go out of her. And of course, you know, what does he say to her? You know, who touched me? But because she was the one that did the touching. But when he, she, you know, said it was me, what did he call her? Mm. He called her daughter. daughter. He called her daughter. Yes. Mm. Your faith has made you well. Mm. And that's... Beautiful. That's what he is saying to each of us. I mean, he's mm -hmm. calling you if you have been mm -hmm. abused and hurt. He's calling you daughter, mm -hmm. his beloved, as you said, his chosen. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Are you his daughter? Have you given your life to Jesus? If you're listening today to either one of uh, my two friends and one of their stories relating to you, or perhaps Tamar's story from mm -hmm. the Bible is speaking to you, he wants to call you daughter. Mm -hmm. And all it takes is for you to fall down before him and say, Jesus, come be my savior. Forgive me for my sin. I want you to fill the emptiness in my life. He longs to be your father and to call you daughter. Mm -hmm. He wants to fill that mm -hmm. emptiness with his presence. And he wants to take away your pain and give you joy. Like you said, yeah. he wants to take that robe of shame away right. and dress you in that new yes. robe of righteousness. Mm -hmm. He's not only able, he is willing. Well, you know, we, um, changing tracks a little yeah. bit, you know, what we saw happen in the Bible over 3,000 years ago to Tamar, sadly continues to happen today, often in families mm -hmm. or by trusted people. Yeah. Um, but there's also a generational link that yes. goes along with this. Let's talk about that a little mm -hmm. bit. Who wants to chat about what we see happen in our family lines? Mm -hmm. I would love. Um, <laughs> Back in scripture, when the Lord is revealing himself to, to Moses, he says in Exodus, he's talking about himself, Yahweh. He says, the Lord is merciful mm. and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in loyal love mm. and faithfulness, mm. slow to anger, but punishing the guilt of the fathers to the sons for the third and fourth, et cetera, mm -hmm. generation. Yes. And that was always kind of confusing to me. Like, what the heck does that mean? <laughs> um, the guilt of that sin that the father committed is not given to the sons, but the consequences of that sin gets passed down mm -hmm. from generation mm -hmm. to generation yes. to generation. Mm -hmm. And so often, Angel, correct me if I'm wrong, but so often abusers have been abused themselves. That's right. Yes. Yes, it's true. Mm -hmm. It is true. And that's why the healing is so important. You know, one of the lies of the enemy will tell mm -hmm. you it is selfish or you don't deserve to get healed. But the healing is not just for you. It is for you. Of course, it's for you. But it's for your generations. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. one person getting healed, allowing God to do what he can do yes. in your heart, in your mind, will change a generation. Because it's funny, unconsciously, we're attracted to what we know. And so you think, you may think, oh, this person, this guy is totally different than any other guy I've ever known. And then you get into the relationship and lo and behold, they abuse you. Because the healing has to happen. But once it happens and God's got a hold of you or you're in the process, you can begin to discern what you couldn't discern before and pick up on little red mm -hmm. flags mm -hmm. and things that, right. that make you more wise. But mm -hmm. God changes that and it takes one person. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's yeah. beautiful. That's another thing about Isaiah 61. So that would be one thing I would love to read, people yeah, to read. for them to yeah. read that 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 chapter and God's promises in there and what He can do. That's right. Yeah. So angels referring to Isaiah sixty-one, verses one through four. 
So if you want to write that down, refer to that later, Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 4. Right. And then even it goes on to talk about the generational legacy. Yeah, it does legacy. Yes. That right. Verse to yes. 7, 8. Well, really, like the whole thing the whole almost. Chapter, yeah. right. Just, Just read keep the, reading God's yes. Read the whole chapter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, our time is getting away from us. We only have a few minutes left, but I want to turn our focus back to our viewers, to you. Mm, yes. And that is, first of all, Tamar's story. In her story, we, she really doesn't find justice, but... She actually does in the sense that her story is alive. 3,000 yes. years later, yes. we're all reading about Tamar. Yes. We know her name. We, we know her story. So we can experience freedom through her life. Yes. And so my question to you, if you are a broken girl and Jesus wants to make you whole, we want to pray for you right mm -hmm. now. We want to turn this time to you. Yes. So Angel, as a, yes, I can see you want to say something, but I want we want to pray for that. Yes, we do yes. want to pray. But I want to say real quick yes, what, what the Holy Spirit just, yes. just showed me. Because in counseling, we know telling the story mm -hmm. is the first part of healing. Yes. And true. look how God modeled that yes in that oh. by modeling her story our, 3, god, 000, is, yeah. our god is something he's so big he is and by the way there's a, a, several new testament stories too of broken mm. women in the bible that god has made whole we've got mary magdalene who was delivered of seven demons i think in our end notes you'll see you can mm -hmm. see the verses that talk about her the woman at the well was another broken woman that jesus made whole he does this this is what yeah. he specializes in is right. taking the broken pieces and building them back right. together yeah. but we really do want to pray for you right now. Mm -hmm. We want you to come right now, get on your knees in front mm -hmm. of your television set or wherever you are. And we want you to lay your broken pieces down at the foot of the cross mm -hmm. and ask Jesus to come and to yeah. heal those hurting places. Yes. So ladies, let's mm -hmm. just spend a time, take a time okay. um, to pray yeah. for our friends. I wish we could be with you yes. in the same room that you could join us here, mm -hmm. but we are together at the throne yeah. of grace. Let's mm -hmm. pray. Can start? Yes, please. Okay. Oh, Heavenly Father, you are so good and you are so loving and you want, you want to heal and redeem and yes, restore. Lord. And you do that. That's your job. You're the great counselor. You're the great physician. So the women, the men, mm -hmm. the young girls, the boys listening today that mm -hmm. need that healing, Lord, we pray mm -hmm. that scripture over them, that you will bring beauty out of ashes, yes, praise instead of mourning, joy instead of despair, as you bind up their broken hearts, as you set them free, mm -hmm. as you heal their heart and you transform their minds, Lord yes. Jesus, mm -hmm. you make them yes. into oaks of righteousness. Yes, Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we're asking you, Holy Spirit, we're counting mm -hmm. on you to do what only you can do for your children. Mm -hmm. yes, we Lord. thank you that your heart is a compassionate heart, mm -hmm. a loving mm -hmm. heart, and that you are after um, the lost sheep, so to speak, right. the mm -hmm. one yes, that Lord. needs you. Mm -hmm. Thank yes, you, Lord. Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Father, I am thinking of that one, the one person that has is hearing this that has that knowing that something yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Jesus, you are the most tender of yeah. saviors. Well, you are the one and only mm -hmm. savior. But in your kindness mm -hmm. and in your gentleness, would you reach out now and bring healing, yes. bring those secrets out of the yes, dark Father, into the light. Jesus, you, you are the light of the That's world. Right, and we pray that now you would mm -hmm. bring that secret out mm -hmm. so it can be yes, healed. Mm -hmm. So that these um, women, children, men can hear daughter or son. Mm -hmm. Your faith has made you well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Father, and I pray for each one right now, the one, mm -hmm. whether it's a man, a woman, a child mm -hmm. that you are speaking to, you are tugging on their yes. heart. They feel that pull within them. Jesus, may they call out to you yes. and see you as Savior. Yes. Reveal mm -hmm. yourself to them in spirit and, and in truth. Yes. Father, if they see you before them glowing in white, or if they've had a dream about mm -hmm. you, reveal yes. to them that you are the one true God and you are calling them by mm -hmm. name. They are yours yes. and you want them to give their lives to you. May they right now reach out 
and touch the hem of your robe mm -hmm. and call you Father, Savior. Yes. And yes. then you call them son or daughter. Yes. And Father, I pray also that you would bring a safe person into yes, their life, Lord. someone they can share their yes. story to yes, so Lord. that it's no longer hidden yes. in the darkness of their heart, but that mm -hmm. you will bring it out mm -hmm. so that they can find that healing. Yes. Father, tell these, these women, these young girls, these men, boys. Abuse is not just to women. It happens to, to yes. boys and men too. Show them that they are not worthless. Mm -hmm. Maybe they've been made to feel that way, but it's a lie. And they don't have to stay broken, Lord. That's, now yes, is the time Lord. for them to Jesus. be made whole. As they lay their shattered pieces down, may they be amazed by your grace that you will and you are making them new. Jesus, you are our living hope. Make yourself real to our friends right now. Mm -hmm. And we together pray in the mighty healing name of our Redeemer mm -hmm. and Savior, Jesus. Amen. 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 And well, thank yes. you, friends, for joining us here yes. today. I want to leave you with a blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face pine make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance to you and give you peace. And we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, friends. We love you. See you next time. Bye.